Welcome guys to my let's play of Runaway 2, The Dream of the Turtle, where we left off. We found a bunch of military guys who have declared martial law on the island. I don't know why. And we're talking to this waitress who has a lot of exes. And we're going to keep talking. So we're going to get back to it. When did they get here? About three days ago. They evacuated everyone, declared a state of emergency, and set up camp at the Tiki Temple ruins. Rumor has it there was some deadly virus running rampant, but I think the soldiers are being paid off by real estate speculators. They'll end up developing the island into a huge golf course for bored old money bags like my ex. Are you talking about Charlie? No, I meant Renaco. An African millionaire who had petroleum coming out of his diamond-studded ears. Do you know the man in charge of the troops? The colonel? Yeah, he looks a lot like my ex, but with half the looks and twice the wrinkles. And he doesn't have that hot criminal look, of course. Your ex-boyfriend, Ryan? No, Milo. A kid from Central Europe or somewhere around there. I didn't know you liked older men. It's not that I have anything for them. The only difference is on the surface, really. Inside, all men are equally childish, no matter what their age. But don't worry, most of us women like children. After talking with him, it sounds like you got him sailing the love boat. Love boat? Well, he can batten down the hatches and lower his mast, because there's no way I'm riding his love vessel. Plus, I can't stand tobacco smoke. And last night he came here smoking this big fat stogie. It gave up a hideous stench. I don't like talking about that guy. Don't look at me. You're the one who brought him up. Military men, for me. I'm changing the subject. Well, my ex-boyfriend was a military thug, and he really made me laugh. Mikhail? No, Tiru. A hilarious sergeant from India. You know, rather than guessing which ex, Brian could just nod and agree. We clearly know this woman has a lot of ex-boyfriends, so I don't think we need to know further. I suppose you didn't hear any of those soldiers mention a girlfriend of mine who fell into the lake. Well, well, a girl. And here I was thinking you didn't have a girlfriend. Uh, no, she isn't my girlfriend. You sure? Look straight into my eyes and tell me she's not your girlfriend. Into my eyes, Kaimi. A little bit higher. Higher. There. Oh, Brian, I thought they were dating too in this game. Clearly not. I guess they're just fooling around. Uh. <laughs> it's a cockatoo impaled on a stake. Hey, look. It's a cockatoo impaled on a stake. Talk about getting off topic. Let's talk about something else. All right. If that's the best you can come up with. It doesn't seem like you have much work. Well, before the military got here, my boss didn't give me a moment of Tropical Island peace. Wait on the bar. Go down to the storeroom. Clean up the photo stand. Shoo those lemurs off the bucking bronco. Put on a skimpier outfit. The skimpier outfit, indeed. Um, what was he said about a bunch of lemurs? Um. What was it you said about a bunch of lemurs? I know it sounds weird, but a few years ago, a Japanese boat full of giant lemurs sunk nearby. It was headed for New York. Anyway, the lemurs swam to shore and took over the beach. You can't imagine what lushes they were. If I turned my back for a second, they'd rip off all the booze. They were bombed day and night, destroying everything they got their little prehensile paws on until we managed to run them into the jungle on the other side of the island. So essentially, they're a bunch of lush party lemurs. So the one lemur being drunk is clearly a common thing for him. Sounds like you have a great boss, huh? If only you knew. Once I thought it might be nice to set out some trays of fresh coconut. And he said, I don't pay you to think. If I get so bold as to give a free drink to a customer, he threatens to fire me, because he's the biggest skin flint in the Pacific. And on top of that, when the soldiers came, 
He ran off like a sissy, but told me that if I closed up shop, he'd fire me. Well, I suppose this bar isn't exactly the workplace of your dreams, is it? Don't be so sure. I've had worse jobs. I even worked in Hollywood as a makeup artist. It sounds all glamorous at first, but when you have to turn 3,000 midgets into extraterrestrials, all the glitz and bling bling starts to fade. Okay. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. Holy crap. So, how did you manage to find work in Hollywood? You know, the same way everyone gets a break in the movie world. Maybe you should save it for another time. There may be miners reading this. What a dirty little mind you have. I got my break thanks to my mom, who was a makeup artist. She would take me to film shoots before I learned to walk. Oh, doing movie makeup must be a hard job. Not really. Maybe it used to be. But ever since they came out with Grease Paint Pro, you can make your grandma look like a star, as the slogan says. Yeah, what, what is, is this? that Grease Paint Pro thing? It's the computer software we movie makeup artists use. You can scan a picture of the character you want to create, another of the person you're making over, and in a few seconds, it gives you a range of makeup options, along with the list of the products you'll need, the features you should accentuate or cover up. To put it simply, it's a very expensive wonder program that only big production companies can afford. Or, you know, you could just torrent the program, crack it, and get it for free. You know, there's that option. But with Grease Paint Pro alone, it's not enough, is it? I bet it's useless without your talent. They're all essential. The computer, the talent, the scanner, the printer, and of course, the makeup products. I don't mean to brag, but I have them all. The great thing about having a computer geek as a boyfriend is that he can set up a home machine for you that's better than the ones most professionals use. I don't mean to butt into your business, but are you talking about Mikhail? No, Koji-san. This guy from Tokyo. Uh, what were we chatting about? All you men are the same. You're so busy looking at our cleavage, you can't pay attention to what we're saying. So it makes no difference. We can talk about whatever you wish. I'm not, you know, I hate to say this, but it's not hard to stare your cleavage, a cleavage when you're wearing, like, dick all. Like, seriously, there's, like, ugh. Anywho. Did you work on any famous films? I wouldn't know. I never go to the movies. I mainly worked in horror movies until I met this director. We started going out, and he hired me to do three movies all at the same time. You don't say. I bet his name was Andy. Or maybe it was Larry. You're a really bad guesser. Anyway, his name was Peter. He made films in Australia, or did something down under. You don't look like a makeup artist. Or a waitress, for that matter. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure if I want to know what you see me as. I'm gonna take a stroll. See ya later on. See you around. But yeah, seriously, like, how she's posed, what is she wearing, clearly is not... Your eyes are gonna wander, basically. I sound terrible, but it's true. Anywho, let's look at everything. Looks like quite a booze selection for a beachside drink shack. And you know what, we should unleash the lemur on the bar, and see what he does. Just just for shits and giggles. Go lemur. Just what he wants. <laughs> no, clearly not. Look what he's sweet. Um, okay. What is this? It's full of sand, ash, cigarette butts, and that looks like a cigar holder. Well, let's take it. I bet I can find some use for that. If I remember right, that's the brand Kordsmeyer smokes. And you know, that's a good chance, I'm thinking, because she mentioned the makeup program, that there's like a good 60-80% chance we're going to have to dress up as the colonel. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's what's going to happen in this channel, or in this chapter, in order to sneak in. It's probably the whole... Okay, yeah. So what else? Special cocktails for $5. There's nothing but ash and cigarette butts. Lucky thing I'm not too tall. Otherwise, that thing could poke my eye out. She is attractive. Is he such a douche? Like, I thought Gina was his girlfriend. And... 
just the dialogue in that conversation too. It it was kind of awkward. Like I am seeing Gina, but I think you're pretty, and we should go out or something. That's that's the kind of the vibe I got from it. What an unpleasant winged rat! Hey. Despite its bad temper. I bet it's got a bigger brain than some people I know. Hey, cockatoos are adorable. Hmm. I'll try to win over its trust. And then maybe it'll leave me alone. Seriously, cockatoos are adorable and they're Hello, smart. My pretty. What in the world did I do to deserve such hatred? Eh, let's drop it. It's not worth it. Also, it's not your fault. The parrot listens to whatever its owner says and then picks up on all of that. So she must have really liked bitched about Brian or her ex enough that the bird picked it up. Menu. Um, what down there? Um, let's, you know, I'm gonna go to the bowl. I, I, I'm very curious about the, the bucking bronco. My goodness, the collateral damage of tourism. If you ask me, rodeos and, of course, bucking broncos are about as Hawaiian as koalas, just to give an example. That is true. Um, anything interesting here, though? That's the way to the machinery that makes the Bronco buck. Okay, I wonder if I can go in there. It looks more like a buffalo than a bull, but what's the difference in Hawaii? Uh... Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that one. No, it's such a wreck something might happen to me. Plus, it probably doesn't even work. Because you can tell the difference between a buffalo and a bull. It, it's... Yeah. Maybe I'll find something interesting. Because they even, the buffalo have that interesting hump shape. Kind of like a... Or maybe something dangerous. I don't know how to explain it, but... Look up a buffalo if you haven't seen them. They're adorable, too. Mess. The only danger inside there is getting tetanus, with all that rusty metal. So I'm assuming there was absolutely nothing in there. Wouldn't matter if the trapdoor weren't there, cause... No, I doubt I'll... Okay, nothing there. The bowl doesn't work, and I'm assuming the bowl's gonna be useful... ...later. It's, it's just a guess. Um, let's go to the shack. And then here, and then possibly there. Well, that's not creepy. So what is this? It has a metal hook at the end. Can we take it? Okay, it could be handy. Huh. It looks like the other end of the cable is hooked onto something down there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Sure. I'll take a glance under the shack. Let's see what it's stuck under. It's pretty dark. I'll get a little closer. I knew it. The cable is caught up in the roots of a palm tree. It must have been stuck here for ages. And I can't get it untied. Okay. I don't know what this darn cable is for, but it sure stuck tight. Okay, but I bet you we can use it later to pull something or stop something from moving, but let's talk to this creepy guy. How long can he sit there baking in this heat? Hello, nice man. Hello. Yoo-hoo! Nothing. Either this guy's deaf, or he's on a real trip. I hope he sees lots of planets on the way. Oh look! He moves and everything! Did that mean... yes? Hi, my name is Brian. Nice to meet you. I guess he can only nod to express the idea of yes. Man, how innovative. Do you know any other tricks? Wow, he can shake his head to say no, too. That's, that's kind of mean. I'm not going to lie. You didn't happen to see a girl fall out of the sky lately, did you? 
Maybe a monk isn't the person to ask about a woman. So I'll rephrase the question. Have you seen a man with no hair on his face fall out of the sky? Maybe you saw her fall and thought it was a miracle. I have a hunch you're not going to be much help, so I'll just drop the subject. I can't see your face very well, but I get the sinking feeling we've met before. Okay. You're a whiz at saying yes or no, but I don't know if you really understand me or if you just have a nervous tick. So I may know the person. I. Saturn? I, I doubt it's Saturn, or it could be that little Asian guy that got. You know, picked up by aliens. Um, we'll go through all of this. Did you stop nodding and shaking your head for some reason, or are you a member of a binary sect? Do you understand my language, or do you just say yes and no at random? Maybe you don't make any other gestures out of spite. You're not a big talker, so there's no reason to ask whether you can read or write. I think I've gotten a bit mixed up, so let's change the subject. We'll chat some other time, okay? Good luck, my friend. This guy may know something, but if he keeps talking that way, it'll be hard to discern the important part. Besides the fact that, luckily, he isn't deaf. Hmm. Okay, we'll come back. Let's look at this. Oh, oh, it's a- Ooh, it's one of those stands where you can get a souvenir photo taken. I always thought they were a little cheesy, though. I just don't get the humor. I was probably influenced by that dumb photo my mom had hanging on the living room wall, though. Me, when I was six, with a stupid grin and Donald Duck's body. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's look at this. I admit I do like the idea of the aboriginal photographer. No can do. It must be hooked up to the rest of the machinery. And if I unhook it, it'll probably stop working. Okay. Nothing interesting there. It could do with a coat of paint. Yeah, right. Then I'll stick it in my pocket and take it home after turning it into a dining room table. Uh, maybe. That is so typical. The same muscle band surfer as always, with the amazing chick in his arms. No, even though the wood is worn out, it's well anchored from behind. Plus, why would I want to knock it down? Uh, because. Ah, I've reached the heart of the beast. I mean, the place where you stick coins in and the photo pops out. Oh, the lights are turned off. That means the photo stand is either unplugged or, even worse, out of order. Okay. This is where the photos pop out, without a doubt. That's where the coins are inserted, with that weird shape, though. I bet it works with tokens instead of regular coins. Sure, smarty pants. I couldn't even force my pinky in there. One. Insert $5 token into slot. Bills not accepted. Two, place heads in face holes. Three, remain totally still while photograph is taken. Four, surfing photo will pop out in less than one minute. Okay. So we don't have anything to activate it, but clearly... Oh yeah, with the photo, yes, we need... Um, we need that. Okay, I don't can't go anywhere here. So let's head. Um, actually, you know what? Okay, we can't go to that little container part. No. Okay, I guess we head to the um, souvenir place. And I don't know where else to go.
They must lead to the basement. Though I totally clicked the wrong area, but it that's... keeps the doors from being open. That's okay. Impossible. Just by looking, I can see the wood is too thick. I can't do it unless I remove that board first. Nothing more than your everyday garbage container. I'm not exactly dying to open it, but let's see what's inside. I hope it smells better inside than outside. Bags of trash, old newspapers. Ooh, this could be totally usable. Almost a whole stick of butter. And no, nothing else in there looks recyclable, at least for now. That's a weird item to take. It's practically a whole stick. I guess if I need something greased, which possibly grease the mechanical bowl, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, do I want to go seafood or visitor? Seafood or visitor? Seafood. So I like the seafood. <clears throat> you know, once in a while, I'll see some food. Oh my god, Brian, walk faster. I can't go in. It's closed. Oh. Well, why couldn't you just... Yeah. Oh, we can see the soldier. We should really talk to that person. Oh, you know, I bet you we need to disguise him. Or, yeah, that's my guess. I bet you have, like, the same rough face structure as Brian. I couldn't get in. The okay. door is locked with several chains and padlocks. So let's go. See. I'm not very tempted by the idea of chit chatting with more military types, but if I have no other choice, huh? This guy's reading. I hope that good habit makes him act nicer than his cohorts. Hello there. Marine Zachariah O'Connor, at your orders, sir. What do you mean, at my orders? Pardon my indiscretion, sir, but I know a superior officer when I see one. Even if he's disguised in plain clothes, sir. Jeez, how funny. Why do you think that? Because you wear flashy colors to draw attention to yourself, sir. And that is precisely what nobody would expect of a soldier going incognito, sir. If you allow me to make a remark, I believe that was a very intelligent idea, sir. Well, if you say so. By the way, you could try not to yell when you're talking. Impossible, sir. I'm hard of hearing, and if I don't speak up, I run the risk of not knowing what the devil I'm saying, sir. Uh, okay. Huh, let's see. What do I say to him now? Soldier O'Connor. Sir, yes, sir. Um. <laughs> you didn't happen to see a girl dropping out of the sky today by any chance? No, sir. I always wear my ball cap this way, so I'm usually blind as a bat, sir. Okay. Why don't you wear a hat that lets you see? It's a lumberjack custom to protect our eyes, sir. Keeps the sawdust out on the one hand, and on the other, it keeps the bird doo-doo away when you climb a tree, sir. What in the good Lord's name can you do for your army if you're half deaf and blind as a bat? My main task is as a lookout, sir. I used to work as a lumberjack before enlisting. And there's no one in this regiment who can climb a tree as fast as me, sir. Okay. So you climb trees to spy on people? When I see the colonel, I'll have you tried for treason. You are hilarious, sir. A deaf spy, sir. High treason. Your lady friend must bust her gut with you, sir. My lady friend? I meant that girl disguised as a waitress, whose body I couldn't describe without making an indecent comment or two, sir. I'm sure that she's actually an MP, with the mission to weed out soldiers who hit the booze too much, sir. I'd like to see you climb a tree. With pleasure. But I need rope to do that, and I don't have any here, sir. Okay. Take me to the camp. Shoot, sir. I can't. People would be surprised to see a civilian snooping around. Someone would recognize you, and it would mess up your plans, sir. Well, whether I'm recognized or not is my problem. I know you're testing me. And I'll end up with my butt in jail if I fall into your trap. So I'm forced to say, no, sir. Hmm. I was told that nobody would bug me if I came in with Soldier O'Connor. No, sir. Only Professor Pignon is authorized to enter the camp with me, sir. 
sounds like Pigeon. Who's Professor Pignon? I've never seen him, sir. I only know that when he gets here, I'm supposed to drive him to the camp and remain at his orders as long as he's on the island, sir. Ah, and I was given a photo. Look. There we go. Which one is he? The monobrow with the wart? No, sir. The old one is Professor James Simon. Good guy. He retired a year ago, more or less. So, Pignon is the young one. Gee, sir, you are a sharp tack. I never would have guessed that in my life. Have you considered I could have you drawn and quartered for giving away confidential info? You've got me between a rock and a hard place, sir. I'm damned if I lie, and I'm damned if I tell the truth. I'm just a foot soldier who can't compete with your devilish West Point logic, sir. Do you know how he'll get here? I guess he'll be tired, sir. I meant, what mode of transportation will he arrive in? I don't know, sir. But whether by plane, train, boat, or swimming, you can't deny he'll be tired. Especially if he comes swimming, sir. Let's talk about something else. As you order, sir. Return to your position, soldier. And remember, I'm watching you. At your orders, sir! Okay. So, we need to kidnap that pitcher. So we can create a disguise with that to get into the base. Not having doors is a bummer. Uh, well, it resembles the ones they have near the camp entrance, but in a convertible version. Quite practical if you're hungry and you find mosquitoes tasty. The truth is, I don't think O'Connor would let me. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna have to talk to the bartender to kind of distract him. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go with the highway. I wonder? Yeah, I'll keep inspecting the island. I'll try to find that cove Loki Lani told me about. Maybe her friends can help me out. Well, unless I'm lost, this must be them. And I'm willing to bet the guy with the surfboard is knife. I'm gonna go check it out. Well, there we go. That worked. Okay. Hey, you're knife, right? Sure am, Mike. Have we met? Actually, I haven't, but I've heard about you. Gnarly, mate. My fame back at the University of California remains. I'm not surprised, though. After so many years trying to finish school, even the professors know me. No. Loki Lani's the one who mentioned you. Loki Lani's one hot babe, eh? She's like totally for my bones, mate. But don't tell Kai or he'll go aggro. Okay. Hey, I haven't introduced myself. My name is... I heard that, bro. You just told Brian that Loke Lani thinks you're the kind, and no one's gonna swallow that, bro. He is like totally full of himself sometimes. He thinks the fact that some shark chowed down on his paw is enough to impress a Betty like. Wait, what did Loke Lani say about me? Not much. She just said you're crazy about surfing. How could I not? I was born in Byron Bay. Where? Byron Bay, in Australia, Mike. The place with the bitchinest days on the planet, buddy boy. Thing is, when I was a kid, I didn't like surfing. I was all into underwater diving. California's where I got all hyped on surfing, but crikey, over there in Cali, it's majorly packed. You know you gotta reserve a wave at least two days in advance? No, I didn't. Hard to believe. I'm telling you, and don't think that means you get to ride it alone. Nah, -uh, if they rent it out to so many mates at once, you feel like you're surfing in a public toilet. So, of course you decided to come here for the peace and quiet. For Kai, too. When I was a freshman in Surf and Sciences, I saw him do a demo in a video. And it was so gnarly that I dropped out of college to become his student. Kai rules, mate. People say he's a bum just because he spends 16 hours a day resting. But all the masters have to meditate. I guess that video was recorded before he lost his leg, right? Negative, mate. The most awesome thing is that his mastery is greater with that iron leg than most people with... Hey, you're not trying to get him to give you classes, are you? Don't worry. Surfing's not my thing. You're not into surfing? Whoa, what's up with that? I knew there were some freaks out there, but... So, what brings you to Mala, then? Okay, more dialogue. I do see a rope over there, next to the building. Clearly, we have to use that. Um, or grab that, I should say. Um, I'm not gonna get into this conversation right now. I'm... Just gonna. I'll just leave you alone. Later, mate. Hey, do me a oh. favor. Don't go into my hut, cause my kid's in there flipping out with a console I picked up while we were having breakfast at Lokilani's. And now that he's quiet for once, we better just leave him alone, in case he decides to come out and ruin this peaceful moment. Okay. I am actually. You know what? I'm... Well, I'll pick up the rope. Oh, look at it first. 
it must be left over from when Knife set up the sawhorse that the board is resting on. Sure, I doubt Knife would mind. It's a good rope. Seems strong. So we need that for the soldier, but I'm going to end the episode here. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying the series of Runaway 2. As usual, let me know. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, you guys have a good day, and I will talk to you later. Bye!